What are you doing? You're throwing a hard one out here. Look at this. Well, yes it is. Well, one of the things that we might want to do first is what? Mm. Set one side to zero. That's very important. Because when you set one side to zero, then you automatically can, like, if you can factor it, you can solve it. So let's see if we can factor this. First off, what's common to both of those? A cotangent is. So let's do this here. If I pull a cotangent out, but I have cotangent x and cosine squared x minus 2? Well, yes, I would. Okay. So and here's the thing. To get 0 for an answer, if this parenthesis is 0, doesn't matter what's there, I get an answer of 0. And if this parenthesis is 0, doesn't matter what's there, I'll get an answer of 0. Because what's 0 times anything is 0. So I'm going to actually have to break this into not just one answer, but two answers. Well, let's start with the cotangent side first. Where does cotangent x equal 0? Well, actually, I think it equals 0 at pi over 2. Because there's an asymptote at 0. That makes sense because tangent at pi over 2 is um, undefined. So the cotangent is the reciprocal, so it would be at pi over 2. All right. But remember, cotangent repeats every what? 1 pi. So it's not just pi over 2, but pi over 2 plus or minus what? n pi. Number of pi's. I know it's 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2. All those odd pi's over 2 are positive or negative are where the cotangent is 0. Now let's try to solve this one. Cosine squared equals 2. Well, and if you square root that, you get plus or minus the square root of 2. Uh-oh, I think there's something fishy here. That means cosine x is what? Plus or minus 1.414? I think that's not possible. What? Huh? Well, Cosine can never be larger than 1. Larger than 1, right? So there's nothing that will make this part true. Nothing in the world that will make cosine squared x minus 2 true. But it is true whenever this is 0. So the only answer is pi over 2 plus or minus n pi. That's when that particular problem will always equal 0. And that's how we can solve for x. That's the value that will make that x where both of these are equal. Oh, okay. I understand now.